Good evening and welcome once again around the world to the Hour of the Time. I'm William Cooper. Well, it's Monday night, folks. We have Gene Miller on the line. Gene, what's happening in the metal market? Well, uh, from the last time we talked, uh, gold, both gold and silver, uh, continued to drop. Uh, both of the uh, gold dropped about $20 over the last week and silver dropped about 50 cents. They're both gold sitting at, uh, three, uh, 342.70 at where it closed today. And, Silver just uh, slightly under four dollars an ounce. Uh, and one of the things I wanted to talk to your audience quickly about uh, is if I had to take a survey and ask not just your audience, but uh, took a survey across America as far as gold and silver and how they would rate them as investments, most of them say, "Yeah, you know, that's that's a that's a poor investment." And, and what I want to emphasize to those people that think of gold and silver as, as a poor investment, they totally misunderstand the reason for owning it in the first place. That's, you're absolutely right about that, Gene. That's like to say that you bought fire insurance on your house in order to get rich. <laughs> Nobody's made a dime as far as getting rich on buying insurance. Well, let's be careful. I, I, I bet a few people have. But well, yeah, they, you know, those that uh, <laughs> few crooks. like to play, match, you know, play with their matches. But uh, by and large, we, we have insurance on our houses, on our homes, and on our, on our health to protect ourselves against any kind of catastrophic loss so that we don't end up, you know, with uh, holding an empty bag. We have some insurance to fall back on to. And that's the number one reason why, why anybody should own it. We should look at this drop of gold as, as great. I can buy this at a, at, a, at a much cheaper price than I could a week ago, and saving themselves, you know, hundreds or even thousands of dollars depending on how much they're looking at buying. Second thing I wanted to mention is, you know, when, when I see gold and silver dropping, you know, I don't know about you all, but I'm curious. Why is it doing this? Why is the market going down? Or why is the stock market going up? Or why do things, you know, I'm a, I guess I'm a, a tinker. I want to know why. I don't just accept it as, okay, it went down or okay, it went up. I want to know why it did. So I did some investigating and checking out with different uh, resources. And, and, and what I came up and. And I guess it kind of makes sense is in, in, in what we're dealing with and where this world is heading. And uh, the, the very people that own the vast majority of the gold are the ones that don't want you to hold it. And if they can make gold and silver look like that's something they can discourage, it, the only way they can really discourage it is by manipulating it going down. If they can suppress the price, and this is what we basically discovered this week is that the Federal Reserve and the central banks around the world are, are purposefully suppressing the price of gold and silver to discourage people from owning it because they know that people owning it will, will create their own independence. They're not dependent on the Federal Reserve notes or, or whatever currency they may be dealing in. Well, they're also artificially inflating the stock market, Gene. Oh, absolutely. And, and I, I believe that they're hoping that everybody will dump everything else and jump in on the, on the gravy train, which... Uh, uh, when it's this high, isn't any gravy train for for people like uh, are listening to this program? It, oh. it could be a gravy train for a huge corporation uh, who had millions to invest and in, in, uh, understand that this isn't going to last very long. Oh, exactly. There's going to be a few elite people, you know, in that in that uh, group that's perpetuating this new world order that are going to make a ton of money, but then they're going to eventually pull the rug out from underneath this stock market and all these investors that, that these retired people, that all these people pulled money out of their money markets or CDs and so on and so forth, they are going to lose thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. I mean, it's going to be a bloodbath. And so uh, I guess if what you see out there, you know, and I'm talking to your audience, if what you see out there 
in the world. I mean, the debt didn't go, go away. Gold went down, but the debt didn't go away. The deficit didn't get smaller. The, you know, the problems that we're facing didn't just disappear because gold went down. They're still there. And if what you see doesn't convince you to own gold or silver, you just, well, surrender your guns, put the handcuffs on and the shackles on, and, 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 and turn in your wife and kids and go quietly marching into those concentration camps because, you know, that's, that's what's left. You sound like me, Gene. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, it just, it boggles my mind. You see what's going on, and, and uh, uh, I guess being in the business, I, maybe I'm privy to information that, that most people aren't, and uh, hopefully this will, um, you know, wake some people up. Now, one thing that, uh, I, before I get off here, I want to mention, and if those that are interested in some silver, we picked up some silver rounds, and, and we're getting rid of them at a fairly inexpensive price. I got about 400 ounces of silver rounds, you know, we're limiting them to like 20, 20 ounces per family so we could spread it out a little bit, but we're getting rid of them at about four bucks an ounce, so if anybody's interested, give me a call tomorrow, and uh, we'll give you a good deal on that. Save me 20, Gene. Save you 20? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm that's real. Save, it, it, me, it save is me 20. A good price, you know, anytime you get it at spot price or right at it, um, uh, it's a good deal. Secondly, when you call in on the evening program, uh, on, the, on the overnight, uh, do realize there's nobody manning the phones at night. You're going to get an answering machine. Do make sure that you mention William Cooper's name on there so that we can identify uh, who the call is to. And if you call in during the day um, and you're interested in this stuff, you know, make sure you ask for me, Gene Miller, and I'll be glad to take care of you. And uh, the reason for that, folks, is because, like everyone, they have to keep track of what their advertising dollar is bringing into them. They pay for the airtime on this program, and they have to keep track of whether or not they're making or losing money off of this. As I told you before, by protecting your assets, you're also protecting the future of this program. Also, they have people set aside like Gene Miller who are trained to deal just with listeners of the hour of the time. They know my viewpoint. They know what we believe in. And uh, they're there to help you and you only. So uh, call Gene Miller uh, or call and leave your name and phone number tonight and ask for Gene Miller and tell him you listen to the hour of the time and someone will get right back to you tomorrow morning or sometime during the day tomorrow. Any last words, Gene? Uh, no, not really. Uh, don't be afraid of what these markets are doing. Let them manipulate them all they want. You're buying insurance. You know, and, and be thankful that you can buy it cheaper now than you could a week ago, or or or, or, or two months ago. Absolutely. I mean, it, it's it's a blessing in disguise. They're trying to discourage you from buying it. See through the facade that they're putting in front of you, and get it. And and, and don't be led astray. You're 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 you know, you're going to have it to fall back onto. If you don't want gold and silver, then. Get rid of all your other things that you fall back on and then buy as much paper. But I don't believe that's what you want to do. I do believe you want to protect yourself. Thank you, Gene. Thank you. And uh, we'll see you, I guess, next Tuesday. Oh, okay. Good night. Good night. And, uh, folks, uh, the rest of the program tonight is going to be extremely interesting. Don't go away. Make sure you've got a pad and pencil by your side, as always, when you listen to this program. If you don't, get one now. <laughs>
Battle stations, battle stations. Boy, I used to hear that in the Navy an awful lot, and that's what we need to hear an awful lot right now. Battle stations. We're in deep trouble, folks, and it's getting deeper all the time. Now I want to uh, read a little bit of mail here. First, I want to remind you to be in Denver at the Denver Coliseum. I'll be there the 16th through the 19th. I'll be at booth number 64. I'll be speaking... Uh, Friday night, Saturday, wait a minute, Thursday night, Saturday, Friday morning, and Saturday night, I believe. Keynote speaker. And uh, I can guarantee you it's going to be interesting, and I'm going to stir a little bit of the black stuff off the bottom of the pot, if you know what I mean. And I'll be holding two workshops where you get involved, and in, uh, it's sort of an intensified learning period. Well, I have a letter here I want to read. This is the first one right off the top. I want to get rid of the, scrape the scum away first. It says, Dear Mr. Cooper, aren't you embarrassed to produce a program over shortwave radio that promotes race mixing and freedom for the world? That chattering Jew you had on last night admitted to having a black wife, which is all right for him, and that he hasn't any genetic potential to give to anyone anyway. They say that you have taken up with someone of color yourself, which would explain why you go on about all the racism in this country. Racial equality is the standard Jewish Marxist attempt to undercut white civilization. It is one of the ten planks of the Communist Party platform. I heard Reds say what you say 50 years ago. Liberals said it 25 years ago. Neil Kahn saying it in the 1980s, and William Cooper says it now. Freedom for the world indeed. Sincerely, Gazarian Carp, Box 21776, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, 53221. I'll say that again. Gazarian Carp, spelled C-A-R-P-E, Box 21776, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, 53221. You see, this is another member of the Euro-American Bullshit Alliance. The address is the same, Box 2-1776. Who do you think you're kidding, Mr. Crap? I mean, Carp? He goes on to say, P.S., what does that grubby little world of human debris, that's you folks, care for your concept of freedom? Freedom to such as these is the opportunity to swipe something belonging to another. You would be better advised to concentrate on saving the potential of the best among the whites, for whom civilization and progress mean more than having a lustful bed and a warm place to defecate. Got news for you, Mr. Crap. I'm sorry, I mean uh, Mr. Carp. Civilization came from the horn of Africa. Had nothing to do with you or your kind. You were primitive, primitive, fierce, naked, pagan, tribes in northern Europe, and there was nothing, nothing civilized about you then, and there's certainly nothing civilized about you now. Write me another letter. I'll read it on the air, too. And from uh, DEW in Edgewater, Florida, Bill, here's a copy of the Constitution, which I mentioned tonight in my phone call to the Hour of the Time. I seem, it seems to be the most accurate current edition. P.S. A word to the wise. John R. Prukop was the Washington State Secretary, Press Secretary, for the Bobo Gritz presidential campaign. It is entirely possible that Mr. Prukop has good intentions but was misled, as I was at the time. And uh, you're absolutely right, uh, D.E.W., because uh, in the beginning I was one of the greatest supporters of Bobo Gritz until I found out who and what he really was, or is, I should say. And then, as I always do when I'm wrong, I admitted it <laughs> and left. Another letter. Dear Mr. Cooper, I'm a new listener and am intrigued about what your programs have to offer. I find it quite informative. Ten years ago, I was introduced to this dangerous phenomenon that's sweeping our country via a book entitled The Hidden Dangers of the Rainbow, by Constance Cumby. And by the way, folks, I recommend that you read that book. It's The Hidden Dangers of the Rainbow by Constance Cumby, a lawyer out of Detroit. 
It so astonished me that I became active in trying to educate others about the Illuminati and other pertinent topics. However, because people were so turned off by this whole subject, I became paralyzed in my own actions. I shut the whole insidious concept from my mind. While stationed at West Point back in 1985, I was again confronted with materials I'd assumed not to be contented with, and again while at Fort Drum, New York. I wish I had allowed myself to continue in the work. To be concise and more to the point, of all the medium that I've encountered on this subject, your program is the most viable. I've tuned into T. Valentine, B. Goodman, and Brother Stair and others, but it is your show who has awakened the sleeping giant within me again. I'm very disappointed when I'm taking notes from the hour of the time and it somehow gets scrambled right in the middle of an important thought. Are you on any other shortwave frequencies other than WWCR? No, folks. Unfortunately, I'm not. I am on satellite. Uh, and we were on television in Florida until the uh, equipment was not able to play automatically an hour tape and then switch over to another satellite for the rest of the stuff. So we were on a week there, and we're not on in Florida anymore. Uh, it says, I have a brother in Jacksonville, Florida, that I've recently introduced to your work. He is a historian, so I sent him a squelched, <laughs> squelched reproduction of a program that I copied with you and Ralph Epperson and the Constitution. It's sometimes difficult making out the names and places with all of the distortions. I'm anxious to hear my brother's reply. So am I. Please let me know what he has to say. Meanwhile, I'd like a copy of your book entitled Behold a Pale Horse and also your latest tape listings. Keep up the good work, William, and may God bless you, your work, and your family. Thank you very much. And that is from SG. And I better not say any more than that because SG is in the military. Another letter. I was able to hear part of your shows through the static of the shortwave radio talking one night about UFOs and the New World Order, and another night with Carolyn Nelson from Waco. Your show is so honest and real news revealing. Please send me info on your UFO book and catalog of anything you have available. I wish I could know the whole truth about David Kress, especially. Thanks, MR in Miami. And uh, I don't have a UFO book, but we'll send you a catalog and you can choose from what we have. Uh, if if you choose anything. Here's another letter that came in a very interesting envelope. It's a huge dragon resting, reclining in a tree. And it has a stamp, 29 cent U.S. stamp, above pictures of the sun, the moon, and what appears to be a stylized version of a horned creature. I would imagine it's supposed to be Satan. I don't really know. <clears throat> um, to William Cooper from J.O. in Berkeley, California. I am writing with one simple question. What is going on? Several years ago, something clicked inside my head, and I figured out that the world is not what it seems. I found myself reading everything I could find, searching for some hint of truth. Finally, a magazine referred me to you. Please send me some truth. I'm desperate. Well, we're going <laughs> to... We're going to send you our info packet, and from that you can decide what you're going to do next. He has never heard this program, ladies and gentlemen, so we're sending him a little flyer on how to tune us in. Uh, this is, as many of you already know, the last bastion of truth and free speech in the world right now. That doesn't mean we're perfect here. You're liable to hear something over this program that's not true, but... When you can prove it's not true, we'll certainly state it on the air. We'll change it. I'm human just like you, folks, and all human beings make mistakes. Here's another one. While a federal prisoner, I was held in a camp at Fort Bliss, Biggs Army Airfield, from 1291 to 8... I better not do that. Operating from Biggs on a daily basis with the following aircraft helicopters. And he lists here several Russian helicopters, specifically a Hind A, a Hind D, and uh, some others. These flew in uh, Russian desert camouflage colors, but unmarked as to nationality or organization fixed wing. Large biplane utility aircraft, fixed undercarriage, big radial reciprocating engine, nose mounted, single, flew in dark green, and unmarked as to nationality or organization. 
Old design, very good old bird, but I forgot the nomenclature. Black uh, H64, AH60, and an occasional Huey unmarked as to nationality organization. Black EC130 and OV1 unmarked as to nationality or organization. Biggs is headquarters of Joint Task Force 6 and EPIC, but I don't know what connection there is to Helos, H6460, etc. Soviet models may be simply familiarization with potential enemy equipment. The Army operates a foreign weapons technology center at Charlottesville, Virginia, and several opposing forces units utilizing Soviet equipment and tactics. This may also account for those at Fort Polk. I was uh, a reserve NCO, um, and I'm going to leave out the organizations, uh, before my boss set me up for a fall. I was also full-time Corps of Engineers, uh, engineers the, engineered the camps, and the bunkers are real. We built them and will build others. I'm on federal probation and don't want to go back to the joint, so please don't use my name. I won't, but he's a brave individual who did sign his name, and uh, I will destroy this right after the program tonight so that you don't have to worry about any repercussions from this. However, I will make notes about the information that it contains. Dear Mr. Cooper, just a few lines to let you know how much I appreciate your nightly show over WWCR. It was a few weeks ago I started listening to Shortwave, and I happened to find you the night you were challenging us to check certain references in the United States Code volumes in our libraries. Having been acquainted for many years of the existence of such groups as the CFR, Trilateral Commission, etc., I knew somewhat of what you were referring to about disarmament, uh, treason of 1961, but did not know that this was a matter of public record. The way you presented this was electrifying and should have been heard by every American. Unfortunately, it will never make the mass media, but for some wonderful reason we can hear the truth over shortwave. Why this is, I don't understand. Apparently shortwave is not yet controlled by our enemies within. However, as you know, when listening to shortwave stations as close as WWCR is to us here, Signals are often not very reliable. Unfortunately, by the time your program comes on here at midnight, WWCR is skipping out over us here, and it is very difficult to get the gist of what is being said. For instance, I had to wait two weeks until a favorable night came along in which I could copy your address to me. It is a tragedy that the nation cannot hear you as easy, easily as they hear Rather and Brokaw Incorporated. Did I hear you say you are on satellite? If so, would you please let me know where your show can be found up there? I do not have a satellite receiver, but would seriously consider getting one just to hear you. Yes, you're that good. Well, thank you. Uh, he says I've enclosed the SASA, and the rest of it is um, likes to know more about my work. Sincerely, are in in Pennsylvania. P.S. Will tapes of you at the upcoming seminar be available? I don't know yet. I'll be taping my uh, talks whether they do or not, so it uh, depends upon how well they come out as to whether or not they'll be available, but we'll see. Uh, folks, for those of you having trouble receiving this broadcast, uh, let me give you just a little bit of advice here. Number one, you cannot listen to shortwave. You cannot listen to shortwave on a cheapy radio. I'm not trying to insult you or call you cheap, but if you have a little $35 or $40 or $60 radio, chances are you're having trouble receiving this broadcast. Also, you're probably hearing another station, a Catholic station, I believe in Birmingham, Alabama, or somewhere around there, that is interfering with the signal of WWCR on radios that do not have digital synthesized, synthesized, I can't even say that word, synthesized tuning. If you have a digital tuning radio somewhere in the upper price range, but not, you see, shortwave radios can cost you as much as five, six, seven thousand dollars for a real super good one and some people are out there listening to me right now with no problems they can hear me clear as a bell others of you have these little thirty five dollar uh... radios and you're having big trouble hearing me now let me give you a recommendation i would suggest that you buy one of the sangian models that sangian models in about the two hundred to two hundred and forty dollar price range if you can afford it if you can't afford it, they make 
radios of a lesser price. There's also some pretty good Sony radios in that price range. And you can go to Radio Shack, and they have what's called the DX390. The DX390, which is also a very good shortwave radio, shortwave receiver. That's the one, in fact, that I use. I had a DX440, which uh, is really a Sangian, but I gave that to my brother in Oklahoma as a present because he didn't have a shortwave radio. So, uh, folks, the next best thing to buying a better radio is antenna. Antenna is everything with shortwave. String a long, bare copper wire. Make sure that your plug to your radio is grounded and plug it in where it says antenna. If you don't know how to do that, go down to Radio Shack. They have everything you need. They'll sell you the stuff real cheap, and they'll tell you. They'll even tell you how to do it, or you can buy a little book on antennas there. If you're in a big city, you might be really lucky and can go down to a, sh uh, a radio store that specializes in shortwave radios, and uh, they can do all kinds of good things for you. So that's the best uh, advice that I can give you at this time. The next advice that I'm going to give you is if you're having trouble with interference. In other words, if you hear something that sounds like bubbles while this program is on the air, or if you hear uh, teletypes or what sounds like Morse code or anything that does not sound like just ordinary static, then that is someone else broadcasting or holding down a carrier on this frequency or intentionally jamming this frequency. Now, from my stint in the Office of Naval Intelligence, I know the sound that sounds like bubbles coming up through water is jamming from a foreign country. I'm not going to name the foreign country because I don't want to get our State Department in more than what they're up to uh, now. But... Uh, uh, it's coming from a foreign country in the Middle East, and uh, it is definitely 100% jamming when you hear that bubble sound. It's called bubble jamming, in fact. Uh, you need to call WWCR to report these things. You see, I call in and talk to Adam Locke, and he says, well, gee, Bill, uh, we haven't heard that. And um, gosh, is it coming from one part of the country, or is it coming from all parts of the country? And unless you call the, you, you, you people are writing me, and you're calling me, and I'm not the radio station. What you need to do is call the radio station, WWCR, ask for Adam Locke. Report the jamming to Adam. Report the interference to Adam. Then they'll be able to tell where it's coming from, how, how much of the nation it's blanketing, and, uh, and, they, and they can uh, do the proper studies and make the proper reports. So their number is 615-255-1300. That's WWCR. Ask for Adam. Area code 615-255-1300. One more time for you slow folks. That's 615 255 1300. The next thing you should do is sit down and write a letter to your congressmen and senators. Tell them you want the jamming of WWCR 7435 stopped immediately. Demand that it be stopped. Demand that they conduct an investigation. Call the FCC and demand that they force these other stations from broadcasting over WWCR and 7435. There's nothing else I can do than that, folks, and we all have to do it together. I always report it when I know about it, but I'm one voice. We have to do this together, everything together, or we're not going to change anything. Now, I want to read this to you. It's from the, we sent away to get the liter literature of the Cult Awareness Network, and this is what they sent me. I think you'll find it very interesting. I'm going to give you their address and their phone number. You too can write for information. You can also write and tell them what you think of these scummy people. CAN, Cult Awareness Network. They are funded. They're actually a branch of the Anti-Defamation League, which is nothing but a spy network working for a foreign country. They are an unregistered agent of an alien government. And uh, they back the Cult Awareness Network. By the way, the ADL is a branch of B'nai B'rith, which is the Jewish branch of the Scottish Rite of Freemasonry. Dear CAN supporter, they call me a CAN supporter. I ask for information, and all of a sudden I've become a supporter. Well, dear Cult Awareness Network,
have not ever and will not ever support you. Says, as many of you know, I recently joined the board of directors of the Cult Awareness Network because I feel the work that CAN does in educating the public about destructive cults is vital. Our cause needs the effort that each of us can contribute. Recent events outside of Waco, Texas, illustrate more strongly than any single event in this country since the Jonestown tragedy of 1978 that Cult Awareness Network must exist to provide information to the public on the cult issue. For two months, the world watched intently as one man and a hundred or so of his followers barricaded themselves against it, armed with illegal military firepower. David Koresh manipulated the minds of his followers so that they were willing to kill or be killed on Koresh's orders, willing to give them their teenage daughters as sexual partners, willing to die with their children in the flames of Apocalypse Ranch burning. Just from this single situation in Texas, hundreds of people now need help. Cult Awareness Network has opened a hotline to assist the families who have loved ones involved in Koresh's group and to provide resources for others working with these families. Already these families, counselors, and chaplains have made use of this hotline service. From all over the world, hundreds of TV, radio, and newspaper reporters have called Cult Awareness Network since the Waco siege began. Cult Awareness Network has been there, thanks to you, to respond. Our experts, including many former cult members, are continuing to give interviews and information to the media worldwide. Thousands who heard Cult Awareness Network's voice through this media exposure have since called for help, straining the Cult Awareness Network national office's resources to capacity. In one four-hour period last month, Cult Awareness Network national staff member Martin Butts handled 45 calls. Cult Awareness Network is now sending out 250 free mailings in a typical week in response to requests for information. The good that CAN has been able to affect directly for those impacted by this tragic situation and on a day-to-day -day basis for countless others over the last several years could only be done because of your past support. Your continuing gifts to Cult Awareness Network can make this kind of response possible tomorrow. Together we can and do help others with direct assistance for personal problems and provide valuable educational information to millions. Sadly, we must continue to offer support for those others whose suffering continues. Please give to Cult Awareness Network. Our work together makes possible immediate help for real people, people whose hurts and frustrations are already known to you. Return the envelope enclosed with a check today, gratefully, and get this, folks, Reverend William Kent Burtner, OP, whatever that means. I'd like to know what OP means. P.S. As the tragedy of Waco demonstrates, our work is more important today than ever before. Preventive education is essential to curb the dangers destructive cults pose. Oh, better not say it. Cult Awareness Network, write this down, National Office 2421, West Pratt, spelled P-R-A-T-T, -T. that's West Pratt Boulevard, Suite 1173, Chicago, Illinois, 60645. That's the Cult Awareness Network, National Office 2421, West Pratt Boulevard, Suite 1173, Chicago, Illinois, 60645. Their telephone number, for anyone who is interested, is area code 312. Now, don't do what they do, folks. Don't call them up and be a total jerk. Call them up and tell them what you think about them or request information. But don't call and hang up. Don't call and threaten people. Don't bring yourself down to their level. It's okay to call. It's okay to tell them what you think of them. It's okay to communicate your unhappiness. It's okay to ask for information. It's okay to do all of those things. But don't do what I know some of you are thinking of doing. The phone number is area code 312-267-7777. That's 
7777. And anybody out there who knows anything about Gematria will find that number extremely interesting. Attention, William Cooper, I just had the privilege of reading over some of your transcripts, which I thought were really amazing. Although the transcripts that I read were over three years old, I still learned a lot. Things that I, myself, had wondered about. A friend of mine who had attended your seminar May 27, 1990, at the Whole Life Expo in San Diego, California, had heard me making some comments in regard to the law and the government, in which case he went directly to your transcripts and told me to read them. I'd never even heard of you before this, but now I'll never be able to forget you or the things that I read. I started to wonder just how corrupted is the law, becoming after my brother was hit and killed by a drunk driver in 1979 who just happened to be a judge's daughter. A misdemeanor ticket is all she was given because she was never tested for the alcohol percentage in her blood or urine for the simple reason of who she was. But... I knew that was just the beginning of my eyes being open to what power is capable of and what people in power will do in order to remain there, or to become even more powerful. I think that it is great the things you are doing and uncovering, and I would love more than anything to be a part of it. Please write me back as soon as possible in regard to this matter. Thank you for your time and consideration. Christine from Paris, California. Christine, it's already in the mail. By the way, folks, everything is out in preparation for uh, going to Denver uh, for the 16th through the 19th. We're leaving, to, well, we're leaving very soon, uh, tomorrow morning, in fact. Everything is gone. All the information packets you've requested are gone. All the audio tapes of this program that you've ordered are gone. All the books you've ordered are gone. All the videotapes are gone, folks. Now, some of the videotapes uh, are gone, like gone to the people who reproduce them. So uh, you'll get them last, but they're in the process of being duped and uh, sent to you. Everything else you'll all be getting within this next week. So that should make some of you very happy. Dear Mr. Cooper, I've enclosed a money order in the amount of $31 for a copy of the Hold a Pale Horse in your information packet. I've been listening to you almost continuously since October of 1992. I purchased a second-hand dish in April and now get you on SpaceNet 3, Channel 21, 5.8 audio each night you broadcast. Let me say that again because I know some of you may have satellite dishes and you're listening to short wave and you can't hear, hardly hear it on short wave where you could get it crystal clear just like, in fact, digital on short wave. And I mean on the satellite. I'm sorry, folks. Uh, the satellite is SpaceNet 3. SpaceNet 3. Turn to channel 21 once you're on SpaceNet 3. Channel 21. Hit your audio button and change your audio to 5.8, and you'll be able to hear me crystal clear. Somebody out there wrote me a letter and said he's been tuning in to SpaceNet 3 every night at uh, 9 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, and there's nothing there. And I've got to tell you, my friend, you can't tell time. There's a big difference between Mountain Standard Time and Mountain Daylight Time and Pacific Daylight Time and Pacific Standard Time and all of those other things. So uh, we're there. You're just tuning in at the wrong time. Um, so just sit down and figure that out, and you'll have us. Satellite communication is a novel alternative information source. I appreciate your effort, and with you, the reasonable portion of your audience in the world, for that matter, I share the faith. I, during this time, have come across certain publications by Lyndon LaRouche and associates that corroborate your thesis. Particular titles include Treason in America, The Science of Christian Economy, So You Wish to Learn All About Economics, The Ugly Truth About the ADL, and his biography. All of this seems to develop a concept of true American conservatism. I am amazed at the explanation he provides regarding the demise of Strategic Defense Initiative and how that conspiracy blocked a possible balance of world power. I remember the SDI being planned and effected and then its lapse into oblivion with no explanation. Propositions of real solutions are continuously being shot down. I take particular note of LaRouche's portrayal of the historical and extant conflict of the Republican form of free men and women and nations and the deceitful amoral means to tyranny perpetrated by the oligarchy and their agents. Since approximately 1977, I have read the Urantia papers as contained within the Urantia book cover to cover. Make them a continuing study and find it a notable work. 
In interpreting the text, I do not find that it advocates a world government that is based on any form of tyranny unless one would portray God's rule by his laws, uh, tyranny. That is, God that is the source of the Trinity, the Father of Christ, Christ who at the time, same time, is also the manifestation of the same infinite Father who is at the center of all. The papers do advocate representative forms of government, distinctly implies that human rights, as embodied in the Constitution of the United States, are true and correct, and any other representation of the papers is false. The highest and greatest civil rule is the rule of self-control. The papers certainly explain the distinction of true and false liberty, false liberty being rebellion against God as exemplified in the Lucifer rebellion that is portrayed in detail in several of the papers. I find no substantial contradiction to the contents of the New Testament. There also are interesting remarks about the details of what are called the mystery schools, the secret societies, the rebellion against God that humanism is, and with it the worship of the intellect, and a restatement of the life and teaching of Jesus Christ. I go through this to urge you to consider reading the text if you have not done so. If nothing else, it is purely fascinating reading. Though uh, through you, these and other sources, I am getting an interesting con non-conventional picture of truth and reality. As you so carefully warn, I do take all of this with caution as to veracity and the responsibility of proof. If you have any interesting information concerning these works, please write. I was occupied as a petroleum landman during the late 1970s and through the end of the 1980s. I was shocked to realize that whole industries could and were being exported out of this country and that this has been occurring since approximately 1973. What makes an ongoing functioning nation is its moral and industrial base. I find that we are experiencing a reign of treason. What raised my head were changes in my daily. The state and Fed are increasingly and arbitrarily in our business and work life, destruction of productive, well-paying jobs, that led me to conclude that the more things change, the more they changed the wrong way. I remember reading in the Houston Post in 1974 a series of articles that included a description of a world consisting of a class of a few that held high-paying jobs and the rest of the population receiving their sustenance from the government. They warned us long ago, the final frontier is not space, the final frontier is sanity. Very truly yours, Palmer uh, and Palmer's from Houston. Thank you, Palmer. Thank you all. Now, folks, beginning tomorrow night, I was going to do some live shows from Denver, but I've decided not to because we have so many new listeners that don't know what we're talking about. We're going back to square one, and it'll be good for all of you old listeners because every time you hear these tapes on the Mystery Schools, you will learn something new, and things continue to fall into place for you the more that you hear them. So tomorrow night, beginning with the dawn of man, you will hear six episodes until we return on the 22nd. I'll do a live show on the 22nd, that is, if we get in early enough. And uh, then we're going to Phoenix for the following weekend, and you will hear some more episodes of the Mystery Schools during that time. Now, it's extremely important that you bring your friends and neighbors and people who've never heard this before, because this is really where it's all at. You see, once you know who the enemy is, you can get rid of the enemy. I don't see too many people out there doing it, although we've unveiled them for you. Uh, the first goal is to get them out of your school system, off your school boards, out of your city government, then go to the county. Get them out of the county government. Get them out of every portion of your government, bureaucracy, everything. Don't even let them be a, a, a dog catcher. And then go to your state. Once the state's cleaned up, then you can go to the federal government. All these other little things that you're mixed up in mean nothing until you do that. You're chasing rabbits down holes. You're going with Alice through the looking glass. You're playing stupid little silly games. Until you get rid of the enemy, you cannot ever take back this country. I don't care what you say. I don't care who you listen to. I don't care what you do. If you don't believe that... Prove me wrong. Prove me wrong, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to see somebody who can prove that wrong. See, you're all dancing around on the battlefield. The enemy's chopping you down like crazy, and you're climbing trees and swinging on the swings. 
It's as if you don't even see them, and many of you don't. You see that movie called They Live? They Live. Go get it from your local video store. That movie was telling you the truth. But you see, all the sheeple, when they watched that movie, they thought it was about extraterrestrials from another planet. The aliens are right here. They're right here. And they even say in their own literature that they're aliens to the rest of us who do not belong to their mystery religion. So, straighten your acts up. Make sure you don't miss one episode of the Mystery Schools, starting at square one tomorrow. Tomorrow will be the dawn of man. Wednesday will be Mystery Babylon number one. And you'll go through five, and then I'll be back to do a live show, maybe two or three. And then I've got to go down to Phoenix for some talks, and you'll hear some more. And, uh, about, and I think every Friday we just may run the next in succession for the Mysteries. It has to be done. There's too many people who don't know what we're talking about, who don't know who the enemy is, who don't believe what we're talking about. And now I have to go to uh, really the last thing on the agenda tonight here is, uh, is a book called Defrauding America by Rodney Stitch. Now, I've talked to Rodney Stitch, and he sent me this book. I told him I would look through the book, and if the book and his sources were credible, I would have him on the program. If they were not, I would reveal it. And he said, fair enough, and he sent me the book. Now, I don't believe there's anything wrong with Rodney Stitch at all, but he has trusted some people. It's obvious here that he should not have trusted. If you have the book, Defrauding America, turn to page 294. It's 294. You'll see a document here that supposedly, supposedly substantiates the identity of a man named Trenton H. Parker as a CIA operative. And this document I'm going to tell you right now is a total fraud, and I'm going to tell you why. At the top it says, Document Classification Status, Top Secret. The term Document Classification Status is not used on any government classified documents. That statement is a fraud. Top Secret is correct if this document were top secret, which it is not, because above that it says original transmission date 3393. Now, if you figure that out, 3393 is 666, and there's all kinds of number games in here that if you understand Gematria, you can figure out who this guy really is. So retransmission date 31093, and that's pretty interesting there too. But the problem with that, you see, is top secrets Documents are not allowed to be transmitted by any means except they must be encrypted by the crypto process, either on a KL-47 or by hand, and they can only be sent by a secure teletype. A secure teletype. Now understand what I'm saying, folks. This document was never encrypted. It was never decrypted. It was never sent by a secure teletype. This, it looks like, may have either been sent by fax or mail or something like that. Who knows what it was sent by. But it says original transmission date and then retransmission date. Those are bogus terms not ever used by the intelligence community. And they would never put those terms up there in the first place. Everybody knows. And it does not have a date time group, which it must have on a top secret document with a number at the end that you use, and I'm not going to tell you how to do that, but you use to verify that it is a top secret document and that it is a, a genuine date time group. That is absent from this document. It is also a classified top secret document, and down below that it is stamped confidential. There is nowhere on this document anything that says that it was declassified or under what law or ruling that it was declassified, or by whom, which is against the law. In other words, folks, this document is bogus. But there's even more. There's even more, folks. <laughs> you see, when I was in the Office of Naval Intelligence, there are certain phrases and things that we use to tell bogus documents so that during an exercise, troops did not actually think that it was real, call to battle and deploy and hurt anybody. And those terms are all through here. According to the date of this document, which is in 1993, and, uh, and nine, uh, yeah, 1993, uh, they're referring to the National Security Act of 1947. 
which is bogus because the National Security Act of 1947 was replaced with the National Security Act of 1954, and that would be the one that would be cited here. 50 U.S.C. 401 and 402 at sequitur. If you look those up, you'll find it has nothing to do with any of this. And down here, um, all kinds of things are, are bad here. Trenton H. Parker, a.k.a. Pegasus 222. Pegasus comes, Pegasus comes right out of the mysteries, ladies and gentlemen. Here's Pegasus 222, 2445, Colonel U.S. Marine Corps, and then it has GS-18. Anyone who's ever been involved with the civil service system knows that a Colonel U.S. Marine Corps is not a GS-18. It's bogus. It says attached Marine-Naval, ITLG, section slash TAD are temporarily assigned duty CIA 1223-64 to 524-92. Now, in the first place, Marine-Naval ITLG is a total bogus uh, designation. There is no such organization. And here is one of the major keys, folks. One of the keys to determining whether a document is legitimate or it's a practice exercise is the spelling of naval. Naval is spelled N-A-V-A-L. In this document, it's, it's spelled in the manner that the Naval, that the United States Navy and the Marine Corps uses to let its personnel know that it is an exercise and not a genuine message. It is spelled N-A-V-A-E-L. In other words, belly button. Security level top secret expires 524.92. Security clearances, folks, do not ever expire. You are either granted a security clearance or you are not granted a security clearance. If you are granted a security clearance, it stays with you until somebody determines that you should not have it, and then your clearance is revoked. It does not expire. There are no dates on security clearances. From time to time, you have to fill out the papers again, and they do another BI or background investigation. So you can take this document and you can take everything that you've ever heard from Trenton H. Parker and you can put it where it belongs, in the trash can. There's much, much more in this document to prove that this is bogus. And if this is what he is basing his legitimacy as a CIA employee on, then he is not and never has been an employee of the CIA or the United States Marine Corps or the United States Navy, unless he can produce a real, genuine document that will check out. This one, folks, does not. You've been hearing a lot of Trenton H. Parker on the Freemason Nazi Network Radio Free America. Did you know that the man responsible for the Liberty Lobby and the Spotlight, Mr. Willis Cardo, was the head of the Nazi Party in the United States of America as recently as 1968? That ought to wake you up a little bit. I've got about five minutes that we can take calls. The line is open. Folks, 602-333. 2174 and Steve Lim Livingston need not bother to call. 602 2174 is the number. If there's anybody out there, let's see what else I get over here. Nothing. Now, I hope you all have been paying attention to the uh, to the events that have been ongoing in uh, the Middle East. You see, there's a piece there that we have been watching, and originally I thought it was a miracle until I found out we bought it. We're paying billions of dollars to Israel and to the PLO to have this piece. So since we're paying for it, folks, I'm predicting that as soon as the money is spent, the piece will be gone. Good evening. You're on the air. Uh, yes, sir. I found your information tonight about the uh, Cult Awareness Network uh, really revealing. Yes, it is, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, I, I had no idea that the uh, 
you mentioned the Anti-Defamation League is, is Anti actually behind the Cult Awareness Network? Yes, they're one of the major players behind the Cult Awareness Network, also B'nai B'rith and uh, other organizations, and many Christian organizations support uh, the Cult Awareness Network. Uh, what do you know about an organization called the uh, Citizens Commission on Human Rights? Not too much. We have a little bit of information on there, but uh, we don't have a whole lot. We haven't, uh, we haven't really looked into them, to tell you the truth. Okay. Well, uh, maybe I can write you or uh, call back some other time when you have some more information. Okay. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. Thank you for calling. 603 uh, 602-333-2174. Good evening. You're on the air. Yes. Uh, excuse me. Um, I was wondering, uh, you know, the, the New World Order? Yes. Well, uh, I was messing around on my, my computer. I bet there's a program that plays things backwards. Uh-huh. And I can't say for sure because I can't really understand it that well, but it, it says either you're not going to win or they're not going to win. That's what it makes it sound like it's saying. Who cares? So I don't know if it's a sub, subliminal message. What difference does it make? Not much to me. Okay. But I know I'm getting ready to... Let, let's concentrate on important things. Yeah. Okay. We're out of time. I want to thank you for calling, and I hope you're listening in. Remember, starting tomorrow night, don't miss the mysteries. Okay, thank you. Thank you for calling. That's about it, folks. Good night, and God bless each and every single one of you. Um, can you hear me in the booth? Right and clear, Lisa. Oh, great. Thank you, sir, for letting me be in a real studio. It's a genuine thrill, sir. Could I trouble you with one request? Sure thing. No synthetic sound, please. I want all live musicians. Yeah. Hey, how you doing? Good. You're off the air now, huh? Yep. Hey, when are you going to be in Phoenix? Uh, the, the weekend after I get back from uh, Denver, the 24th, I think it is. Okay. And where are you going to be speaking? I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to, uh, when I get back, I'll, I'll announce it. Oh, okay. Hey, can I ask you just a couple questions quick? Sure. Okay, what um, what was this between you and Valentine? You know, Valentine made some statement that, you know, you were a CIA operative and, and you were giving out uh, misinformation. Is that what it was? And you didn't hear my show? Huh? You didn't hear my show? I didn't hear it. I, I missed it that night. Oh, you need to get a tape list and buy that tape. Uh-huh. For a whole spiel on that, huh? Yeah, Valentine's a fucking Freemason. Ah. Uh, he's no Christian. He's lying to the world. Well, see, that, you know, that, that's what really confuses me because it seems like him and Liberty Lobby, you know, uh, Liberty Lobby uh, seem to be, uh, you know, all pro, uh, uh, you know, for all of us, you know, and, and as anti-world yeah. uh, no. government and, yeah, uh, you know, the spotlight comes up with all this stuff, you know, and, you know, the, you know, the, it's, you know it's, it's, they run on the same lines that you're running. They're pro-white Nazi. They're anti-everybody else. You can search the spotlight from top to bottom. Every issue you get, you will not find one mention of the mystery schools or the Freemasons or all of the other people who are really responsible for this. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Because, I mean, you know, uh, Valentine, I've been listening to him, you know, for, uh, for years, you know, and I always thought he was one of the good guys. Well, 
I, all I can tell you is, if you've been listening to this show for long enough, uh, they control both sides of any fight. Uh -huh. that's, that's how they win. That's how they make change. That's how they engineer change the way they want it to be.